Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Krisha and I'm really excited today. I'm a little bit late in filming this video as the Sephora VIB sale did finish about a week ago. So I'm a little bit late, but hopefully you guys still find it really, really fun. I love hauls regardless of the time of year. So I'm hoping you guys enjoy this video as I try on everything new that I got at Sephora during the VIB sale. I didn't go too crazy, it only fit into this bag. So nothing crazy this year, but this is the final look. And you guys, I am so impressed with some of these products. I cannot wait for you guys to see how they perform in this video. Sneak peek, one of the products is the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Palette. Oh my gosh, it is so, so good. If you wanna see how I came up with this look using products that I got during the VIB sale, then definitely just keep watching. Right, so first we're gonna go over the products I kind of like repurchased, like nothing that I can really try on for you guys. But I just wanted to show you just my haul because I think it's still fun to, to watch hauls and try-ons. So of course I repurchased my Glow Recipe Blueberry Cleanser. I love this cleanser. It is so effective as a one and done cleanser. I have it in my shower because I don't double cleanse in the shower. It's just too tedious to do oil first and then a second cleanse because you have water everywhere, steam, whatever. So this is the most amazing one and done cleanser if you need something to take everything off but your skin still feels really clean but not tight this is the one to get I literally cannot live without this cleanser now it is so so good so I just repurchased it because I am running very very low so next item that I just got a full size of because I had little sample trials or like 100 point reward sizes was the Ola Hendrickson pore balance facial sauna scrub this is another amazing product you guys this is for those that definitely like scrubs because there is some friction to it but it's also amazing because it provides this like external like heat so it does feel almost like it's opening up your pores and just like refreshing them and cleaning them it does feel like you are in a sauna kind of with like eucalyptus oil put on the rocks and that steaming or you know it kind of gives you that experience so it's not for the faint of heart this is not for people that have sensitive skin or individuals that don't want to scrub because they just feel like that's too harsh or irritating. Any sensitivity to heat, not for you because this is not a joke. This is definitely more of an intense scrub. So I only use it when I feel like my pores and skin is congested, which is once maybe every four to six weeks. It's really, really rare that I use it. But when I need it, I need it like it's one of those products that if I don't have it in my collection and I feel like I need something to really just like purge my pores and refresh things I need to have this very very amazing product it's not overly expensive for what it is um, I think the ingredient that causes heat probably will be something like some peppermint in there which again can be irritating I get it this is not something you want to be using every second day or once a week I really do feel this is a once every minimum maybe three weeks and then I usually, like I said, push it every four to six weeks. So yeah, it does have some peppermint in it, some kelp extract, it does have eucalyptus, I thought so. Um, so it does have a little bit of that to create that sort of like heat and hot feeling. And now we can get into using some of the next batch of products that I got. But let's start off with Makeup by Mario and this is the Ethereal Eyes palette i'm sure you guys have seen lots of reviews on it because when it came out it was just one of those really i don't know just surprising products a palette that kind of we weren't expecting from makeup by mario i wasn't gonna get it it's neutral it's not anything that i don't really have in my arsenal but then i went in store to swatch it and the mattes are what sold me because i was debating his matte palette for a long time. It had such beautiful natural sculpting undertones in it. And so I debated that palette for a long time, but when I swatched it, it would in store, it would always feel dry. And then I didn't know, is it dry because it's sitting out in the open air for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of days at a time before they switch it out? Or is it actually a dry formula? And I just didn't want to kind of go down that road um, to try it and then hate it and return it or keep it and never use it, whatever. But then when I swatched these mattes, you guys, yeah, this one really, really blew me away. It's not the shimmers that blew me away. And don't get me wrong, 
they have some beautiful, beautiful reflection to them. They're almost like topper shades. I'll show you guys a few swatches. I didn't swatch the whole palette because I feel like there's tons of videos out there. I just wanted to go ahead, show you how I get on with it as a first impression. And I can just say that the matte powders are quite special. Okay, and I'm gonna start with that kind of like peachy. Oh, it is quite powdery. So yeah, it is gonna be a bit of a powdery palette. I can tell already. But if it blends like a dream, I'm not going to be too worried about it. I just want to take off this plastic situation so I can use this beautiful mirror. <laughs> Let's go back, um, back into that shade. And again, it is very, very powdery. You can kind of see a lot of like kickback. Very powdery. So let's go in. Um, I'm sure we just, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh dear, it just literally melts into the skin. If that's even something we can say about a matte shadow, but it really does. It literally just melts into the skin and um, you have a nice transition. No work at all was done doing that. Let's just go in the next shade gradient here with that pink and let's just kind of you know what, I think I just want to do this all over as well, just to kind of build up that transition. Let's just be fast. This is not like a hardcore review. This is a Sonia G Worker Pro. So as I'm filming this, we are heading into Black Friday and I feel like every year brands just really try to catch people as early as possible for the sale. And so we've had Black Friday sales since literally last week, like the beginning of November. And I just went really crazy at Pat McGrath. I didn't purchase any of her holiday collection. And then she comes out with this 40% off sale and I went ham. Like I went really, really crazy. I feel guilty. I almost didn't sleep last night because I felt so guilty purchasing so much makeup. I don't know. I just, I couldn't resist. I mean, it was just so well priced and you got a free gift with purchase. Like, I don't know. How are you guys purchasing anything from that sale? That is the sale to beat right now. But who knows? Charlotte Tilbury will probably put something out. This is so pretty. This is absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Okay, I want something a little bit more gray toned. So I'm gonna go with this shade here. It doesn't seem overly dark, so I don't know how much extra buildup I'm gonna get, but I just wanted a little bit of something more mauve-y. And just adding a little bit of that onto the lid. Now let's go in with something a little bit dark. Same brush, I'm just gonna wipe a little bit off. And I'm gonna go not overly dark. I'm just gonna swatch which shade I should use, like this one here. Ooh, that gave quite a bit of pigment. Or I'm debating this one here. That to the left. I think I'm gonna use that and just kind of build up the crease just a little bit, so that shade there. Just tapping it and then I'm gonna blend a little bit. Nothing crazy. Just creating a little bit of depth. Just slightly pulling that in. That did create quite a bit of depth. So I'm gonna go back with a blending brush. This is the Refer 15. I'm gonna go back in with that first shade. Or actually, I'm gonna try this shade just to kind of blend the edges out a bit. Very powdery, but just to kind of blend everything out. Lovely. I'm gonna go in with that first transition shade just a bit, just to sort of like recreate a bit of gradient there. Okay, that's enough for playing with mattes. Let's go in and do a little bit of a topper. I'm gonna go in with this metallic shade. This is the one that actually has a little bit more of a um, pigment to it and base color to it. It's kind of pewter, silver, platinum-y. And I'm gonna go and put that just kind of like on the edge, middle to edge. Yeah, a little bit of fallout. It's almost like blow it off your finger. I'm going to use my finger again and go in with this taupey shade now and just top everything, everything up. It's very thin. It's almost like the Charlotte Tilbury pop shade, but it just is a little bit easier to dig into. We'll see if it forms hard pad because I feel like Charlotte's form hard pad. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is pretty. That really translates nicely. And then I'm going to go in with the really, really blinding one and just do an inner corner situation. I will take it on a brush though. Okay. 
Okay, I really like this. So even with a brush, it applies so nice. And no fallout really with these shades. Just a little bit on the brow bone. Wow, that is so pretty. So let's just kind of do a little bit something on the bottom. Let's just kind of go in with those two shades. The first crease shade. We'll go in with that second pink shade. Let's use the darkest shade as a liner. So we'll go in with that shade as a liner. Just define the eyes a little bit. Doing like a little bit of a faux wing effect, but that is pretty good. I mean, just kind of wipe a little bit there. As we move into mascara, this is really, really good. It's, it, it actually can be okay for, for daytime. I don't feel like the glitters are too much. Like sometimes I feel like Pat McGrath, I can't pull it off. With these, they're just delicate enough that you could definitely just, you know, put a look together for every day. Very, very beautiful, you guys. Wow. Okay, let's do mascara um, next. I'm going to use a new mascara. It's not new. It's new to me from Wonder Beauty. They had this almost like two for one. So two of the mascaras that she makes for the price of essentially um, one of them. And both of these had amazing, amazing reviews. So Mile High Club, and this one is unlashed. So what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? For some reason, I want to do unlashed. The curl one. I don't know. I just have this feeling I want to use a curved brush. So natural bristle brush. Definitely a bit of a curve to it. Very, very nice pigment. So let's go in and see what this does. Definitely more of a thin formula. I'm trying to replace the Bite Beauty one, the Upswing Mascara, because Bite Beauty is no longer with us. Before that, I had to replace the Marc Jacobs Mascara because Marc Jacobs is no longer with us. I don't know, I, I'm pseudo picky with mascara. I might have to go back to um, the Chanel Le Volume because that's sort of a mainstay mascara for me. Like if I don't know what mascara to get that one is really really good so this one is okay it's a bit thinner so I'm not getting a ton of volume building up it feels a little bit more on the natural side so we will put on a couple more coats but so far I just I don't know I just feel like it's a little bit a little bit natural for me oh, by beauty you just just did us bad you know why did you have to be discontinued? So no go in terms of replacing my beloved Bite Beauty or Marc Jacobs, which I have a backup of. The Unlashed, Unlashed, you know, the one with the golden black tube. I do have a backup of it. I just, I don't know why I'm holding it because mascara dries up even if it's not open. I feel like it just over time, it just does. So I need to just maybe open that one up, enjoy it. And um, yeah, move on and try to find, try to find one down the road. But whatever it is what it is okay <laughs> let's bronze up a little bit or actually no let's not bronze up because I want to use the new butterfly palette from hourglass I debated I really really debated you guys I didn't know which one to go for the tiger one seemed too dark for me and going into winter I'm extra pale so that was kind of a no-go and I knew I wanted just to purchase um, the one so I ended up getting the butterfly palette it was the one that made the least sense to me but yet the one I just kept gravitating towards there's no bronzer in this particular palette as you guys probably have seen in various reviews but there was just something about how it looked like on the skin on the models that just kept bringing me back I just couldn't stop looking at some of the Hourglass videos on Instagram or even on the Sephora product page. The highlighter looked absolutely beyond glowy. It just kind of spoke to me and I hope, I hope, I hope I'm gonna love it. Oh, and I got a brush, you guys. I got the dual-ended Hourglass brush. Finally, because it's been in my wish list for the longest time and it's a million dollars and so I wanted to get some money off of the brush. Um, I do have the Hourglass, the Veil Powder one, the bigger one, and I do use the smaller end for blush, but I feel like for these palettes, this will be really, really ideal. So nothing crazy, nothing new. Um, I just ended up getting it. 
I want to set my under eye area. I'm not going to do swatches really with this because you guys have must have seen reviews. Those have been out for a while. So I'm not going to bore you with those details. We're just going to go and play. So I want to use the ethereal light to set my under eye, probably mixed in with a little bit of the diffused light. So again, ethereal light, mainstay color, diffused light's a mainstay color. I believe only these three, the two blushes and the highlighter are new. And then that one is one of the highlighters already in the collection. So let's just go in between these two, a little bit powdery, and let's just set our under eye. Cause I didn't do that before. That's pretty slightly brightening really really pretty again these are so faint they're kind of a drier powder formula it's not going to give you a ton of like emollients to the skin and dewy glow it's just going to be more of a reflective glow um, in terms of the consistency well, let's just swatch the two blushes so this one and this one so first off we have soft flush so that is soft flush don't mind the other swatch that's from something else, but that soft flush, so kind of pinky, corally. And then we'll do that middle shade on the bottom. Definitely more kind of like ready, but still coral, like definitely warm, but they're both warm. So yeah, I guess a lot of the critique on the butterfly palette is that the blushes were too similar. The other powders are too similar. Like what's the point? There's no bronzer. It just kind of seemed pointless and I get that. And yet somehow it's still, Still took me, still took me in. So let's go in with that blush there. It's gonna be quite a bit of pigment there, I'm sure, but we're just gonna kind of pounce it. I don't really have blush in this shade. I feel like it's such a youthful and fresh tone. A bit unexpected, you know? So let's go in. This side I'm not tapping off just to see what it does and it's blending out really really nice yeah it's really pretty and you would think it would look kind of stark especially going in with winter skin but it doesn't it actually looks really really pretty so that's that first shade that lighter shade up there next I'm going to take that one and just kind of put it Ooh, this is more pigmented this is definitely more pigmented and just kind of put it more on the edges um, or at the top of my cheekbone a little bit there. Oh yeah, it has a little bit more pigment. They are similar. Like, don't get me wrong. They are so, so similar. It's a very, very unique, unique palette. I'm going to put a little bit more of that lighter blush just to sort of give me a little bit more flush to the center. All right, there we go. Do I bronze? I wonder if I should bronze or not. I'm going to bronze just a touch, you guys. Like nothing crazy. I just feel like I need a little bit of bronze. So I'm just going to use a Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in medium. Just the outer edges, just to add a little bit of color. Nothing crazy. Okay. So just a touch, literally a touch. Let's go in and this highlighter just looks so crazy in the promo pics, like just so, so crazy. Just the other side of the brush. I'm not gonna tap off excess because I want as much glow as possible. Okay, you guys ready? Magic truly is what sold me on this palette. The combination of the blush and this highlighter on the models is just, so stunning. Oh, it's just so magical. And it has a slightly more translucent base, I would say. Like just looking at it, it's very, very champagne-y. But I feel like it has enough of a translucent base. It's right there, so you can't really see it because it just gives that very, very shiny, glossy glow in powder form. It's not really emphasizing too much texture, shockingly. But again, because there's no real base color, it's not dulling my blush, which is what I really appreciate with certain highlighters. If the highlighters have too much kind of almost like a metallic base to them or like a pigmented base to them in terms of shade or color, it really dulls down the blush. And then you're reapplying more blush, which is fine. I mean, it's no big deal. But 
yeah, it's better not to, I think. All right, so I'm gonna go in and just use this shade that I haven't touched yet and just blend everything a little bit together just to see what this does. It's definitely more of a glowy powder, but not overly metallic or anything. Beautiful, it literally just blurred everything. I'm not sure if you can tell, I hope you can tell. Oh, it's just gorgeous, wow. Reminds me of kind of like more of the Meteorites powders by Guerlain. Let's see if I can make this apparent, yeah. It just literally blurred everything. Wow, it's so pretty. I'm so glad I got this. I wasn't sure. Well, I was kind of sure. I just kept looking at it and like analyzing it and just fawning over it, waiting for the sale to come. Because I knew I wasn't going to be able to film in time for any official reviews. And so I waited for the sales this time around. Life has just been too crazy. And I waited for the sale and I just, I, I'm really, really happy I got this one. All right, guys, that's it for the face products. Let's do a lip product and then we are done. We are officially done, done, done. So I have MAC Lip Liner in Oak, which is a very, very neutral, nothing crazy, your lips but better, almost not even existent lip liner. And I just want something to define my lips. And just a trick, I don't tend to like overline my lips too, too much. I don't feel the need to. And then I just get worried that it's going to look messy at some point in my work day or whatever. But I do like to overline just this Cupid's bow, like just going do, 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 do. It just really creates quite a nice pout. So I've been doing that. Okay, fill it in a touch. And then this product I saw on a YouTuber's haul, Babs beauty. I love her. I think she is one of the most straightforward, no drama YouTubers out there. She's just so like straightforward. It's just so enjoyable to watch because she gets to the point. She tells it how it is. And yeah. So anyways, Babs beauty. I'm sure you guys do follow her. She recommended this on her channel and I've never really looked into the hangover or Too Faced hangover pillow bomb. I just never noticed this product. There's those products that just kind of like go under the radar and you don't even think about them. I swatched a bunch of them. Mango looked really nice too, but I ended up getting the watermelon because I feel like it just has that slight pink to it, which would look really pretty with a lot of different lip colors. So yeah, and it has a really nice wand, a really nice balmy thick consistency, which is what I love. So there's a swatch, just a faint pink to it. It's really nice. The taste is fine. It's slightly sweet, but there's no chemical uh, taste to it. Very balmy, like very, very balmy. This is so pretty. I like it because it's not sticky, but it feels like it's going to you know, stay on your lips. There's definitely mint in here. It's not like the lip injection, which is like a combination I feel of camphor as well as maybe mint. Um, this is just mint, so it's slightly cooling, which could be irritating for some people. I, I like mint. <laughs> I like stuff. I like the Buxom one, so it kind of feels like the Buxom lip glosses. It is so, so pretty. All right, guys, we are zoomed out. I'm just reaching over <laughs> to get the other product. And I absolutely love how this turned out. I didn't know if the colors were gonna go um, together in terms of the eye palette and then the hourglass palettes. I felt like, oh, the Makeup by Mario palette is really quite cool toned. And then the Butterfly palette is really quite corally borderline ready undertones, but it looks amazing. It looks so, so good, so fresh, so youthful, exactly what I wanted. Like you think this would be a dud, like you really do. When you look at this compared to the tiger or the elephant, you would think this was gonna be a dud. And yet it is so gorgeous. Like the blushes are just, so kind of glowy, but just youthful looking in terms of the shade. Nothing like this in my collection. Like, I don't think I have a blush this shade in my collection, which makes me happy because I'm a blush freak. So for me not to have this shade in my collection is, I think, pretty special. And the highlighter is just 
to dye for because it has, like I said, that transparent base. And so your blush can still shine through and it doesn't just sort of dampen or darken the blush or make the blush kind of seem like it's gone. And then this one, this Stro powder here is the most beautiful blurring powder. Um, I thought it was going to be almost too highlighty, but it's not. It's very, very delicate. And I feel like it is the perfect, perfect, almost like blurring, blending powder. And then the Makeup by Mario. I was excited for the mattes and the sparkly shades really just won me over today. It is so elegant. It is so pretty. Very easy to use. I feel like all skin tones can really, really wear this beautifully because while the shades aren't overly like dark in terms of looking at dark looking in the pan, they're pigmented enough that you can build them up so beautifully and they're powdery but they stick to the skin so don't be dissuaded or just intimidated by the fact that it's overly powdery just one tap you'll get that extra powder off and the rest it just stays on the eyes the only shade i found to be a little bit crumbly is actually that metallic shade i don't feel like these topper shades are crumbly at all i wouldn't worry about those it's just this one is a bit crumbly so you just have to blow off the excess and maybe i think i would try using it a little bit damp as well i think that would look really pretty oh yeah this brush it's really expensive i feel too expensive to get when it's not on sale, but I feel like it fit into that hourglass palette beautifully, much better than my other brush um, does. And it kind of makes me want to use the palettes that I even have in my collection a little bit more, having this particular sized brush to use with it. And then last but not least is the lip balm from Too Faced. I like it, but one thing I'm going to say is that as the watermelon flavor or scent wears off, because I just went to curl my hair a little bit, like literally five minutes, and I feel like the taste I don't know, it's kind of like slightly plasticky, like kind of not chemically, but just has a taste that I don't like. I still think it looks good. It feels really, really good. Like it feels really nice on the lips and the mintiness is still there, but it's very, very toned down. Nothing too crazy or irritating. I don't know, I just have such aversions to products on my lips, like taste of products um, or lip products. So we'll see if that dissipates maybe in the next in the next little bit or half an hour. Um, yeah, and that's it you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm talking really fast because I feel like it's gonna be a long extended video, but it's been a while and I really, really enjoyed filming this video for you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to subscribe before you go today for more content from me. Take a peek through my library for past videos. And that is it. I'll see you guys very, very soon. <laughs> Bye.